morning, my Slavka universe. I'm back on my way to work. As I said, I call myself somewhat is healthy. Um, today it's one of those uh, relatively unprepared videos, but I honestly didn't watch too much. But the big game already happened at 12 o'clock uh, with Real Madrid taking an early lead, uh, dominating Girona. Uh, doing everything right except scoring a second goal and that came back to bite them. I think Girona had a huge chance uh, to equalize where they hit the bar. I think it started to turn around the 60th minute when then I think they got a penalty, uh, made it 1-1 and then even got the winner in the 75th and had, had, had another shot shot at the bar. It was a very crazy game. Uh, after 60 minutes, probably Real Madrid should have been up by 2 or 3 nil. And then it was all Girona and Real couldn't uh, get back in business. Uh, that, of course, comes at the heels of where we thought that Real Madrid is going to challenge for the title. Uh, nope. With Barcelona winning and Atletico Madrid winning, we are back where we were about a week ago. So, uh, the Spanish title race is an odd one, absolutely odd one. Uh, other games in Spain I saw, uh, you know, I followed uh, Valencia against Espanyol, which was a nil-nil draw, and it seems to me a deja vu. I mean, I watch Valencia uh, attack, 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 and they're not making the goals. Um, and the team that is visiting is uh, hanging on to win, or some uh, hanging on uh, to a draw, sometimes even winning. So. Really odd form that Valencia is in. Um, I think Villarreal beat Sevilla by 3 0. That's a huge result, I have to say. Also, uh, can, can't believe Sevilla is in, is in absolutely horrible form at the moment. Uh, they also seem like title challengers and they are completely dropping off. So, with all that, even if Barcelona is not playing great, uh, La Liga is theirs to take. I think there's not much more that can be said. Uh, Germany, I think there was a 1-1 between uh, Frankfurt and Gladbach, which yeah, Frankfurt is still unbeaten uh, this year, but they just cannot get a win. Uh, and when I saw them in the Europa League, they played well. It's just there's something quite not, also not quite right with them. Uh, and then we are already in Italy, where Fiorentina played at Spal, and the weird thing is, was the jerseys, I mean Fiorentina in red, I could somewhat expect, but Spal didn't play in their nice uh, blue-white stripes, but they played in uh, the third jersey, which I found an odd choice, but okay. Uh, Spal took a lead that Chiesa equalized uh, just before halftime, or was it in the second half already? And then the game uh, took a very weird turn. There was a foul on Chiesa in the box, which was not given. And right on that counter attack, and, and you could see Chiesa was actually holding his foot uh, in pain. But referee didn't see anything. And then right on the counter, uh, Spal scores and makes it 2-1. Well, of course, follows is the one thing that where uh, VAR is a little bit of a pain, but I understand there is no other way to handle it at the moment. And I remember ice hockey games uh, where it happened this way, uh, where one team takes the lead and then it's overturned because the other team had scored already. Uh, I don't like that there are the parts of the game being played and this is completely erased from history, but I don't find a better solution. So and this is what happens. I mean, there was a lengthy VAR review and then a penalty is given on the other end. So Fiorentina gets the penalty, uh, Vera 2 makes it 2-1 uh, for Fior Fiorentina. So instead of 2-1 for Spal, it's 1-2 Fiorentina and then Spal completely uh, uh, caved in and Fiorentina scores two more in what seems like an easy win, which it clearly wasn't. Uh, Another game that I actually was very happy, happy about, I didn't see too much of it, uh, especially not the last few minutes, was Genoa at Lazio, where 
Lazio actually controlled the game. Uh, no, no, Genoa had uh, initial chances, but then Lazio controlled the game and took the lead uh, in the first half. Which at that moment was a little bit lucky, but then uh, in, in the second half Lazio had chances to extend their lead, um, but it didn't happen. Uh, simply put. <laughs> and then, unbelievably, um, Genoa pulls one, uh, pulls even, and gets a win in overtime to, through Crescito, which really was a, uh, you know, it was a stoppage time winner, huge celebrations followed and yes also for me because uh, that's an opponent in the race for fourth spotless uh, up until that at that point the results were going all Milan's way uh, gotta be said uh, I was then hoping that Sampdoria can get something from Inter and for, for most of the, the, the time, you know, Inter had a little bit more of the match, but it, especially in, uh, late in the second half, uh, I thought that Sampdoria really can make a breakthrough, but uh, Sampdoria also is hitting a funk of their own a little bit. Uh, and then Inter gets the lead. There was a corner that, you know, the uh, Perisic was dribbling with the ball to the corner, just puts it there and then dribbles back. Uh, makes a cross in and uh, D'Ambrosio, I think, uh, makes it 1-0. But right two minutes later, uh, Sampdoria gets equal to Gabbiadini, who really profited from very poor defending on Inter's, half, Inter's behalf. They couldn't clear the ball and suddenly he takes the ball. He was uh, pre-prison in offside position, but there was kind of a, they were lying around and he takes the ball and puts it in net 1-1. Then, yeah, corner kick. Again, two, two minutes later, Nainggolan shoots it into the net. Uh, they lo or looked for offside, but there was no offside or whatever. Uh, so, and that was it. I mean, the crazy 10 minutes that uh, had three goals and Inter hangs on. There was a, there was a chance for Sampdoria uh, to equalize, but yeah. My, re the, my feeling was, yeah, you cannot win them all. I mean, uh, this this round was so perfect for Milan uh, already with the win at Atalanta and Lazio losing. So, you know, uh, it would have been an added bonus if they can get within two points of Inter. But yeah, uh, probably what that was too much to ask from the soccer gods. Uh, and we still have Roma Bologna, but I expect only a Roma win. But I honestly... I like where this is heading at the moment. Still cautious, but uh, it looks good. I'm still amazed by Piontek. And then I think the last result that I have uh, to is a nil-nil between Napoli and Torino. Kind of disappointing. I mean, also Napoli is a little bit not quite there yet. I have the feeling, but you know, maybe they are now focusing on the Europa League. Uh, if you look at the score sheet, there were a ton of yellow cards, especially in the second half. I have not really seen much of that game. That's pretty much what I um, watched yesterday, saw yesterday, followed yesterday. I actually watched skiing. Uh, and yeah, in case you were interested, the Austrian Cup. Salzburg wins and Rapid wins. Now Lask plays at home to Rapid and Salzburg away to Graz. AK, GAK, uh, which, yeah. I feel confident that the last can make it to the final. Let's put it that way. And I would be happy about it. But I'm still in awe of how well this weekend went soccer wise. Uh, couldn't have asked for a better weekend. Yes, I could have asked for an Inter loss. That would have been even better. But other than that, I'm happy, content, and yeah, I hope it will continue in this fashion. Let me know how, you, which games you watched, what you followed, uh, how you see things panning out. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates 
on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.